says, go get us some people, some people who will fight. And he says, but I'm going to go up on the mountain. Hmm. Now, this is one of the reasons I, would, I didn't really know if this is what God wanted me to do because it has an illustration to it. But, but I think we can make the folks at home understand it. Well, I don't know if I can, but I know God can. That's right. Mm-hmm. So Moses goes up on the hill. And he has the rod of God. And it says that, that as long as his hands were held up, that the Israelites were winning. Mm-hmm. But it says that his hands got heavy. That means he got tired. That's right. And every time he got tired and the hands went down, mm-hmm. they lost. Yes. So, so Joshua chooses to and Moses goes up. And down in amongst all of that, here's this huge battle. You've got swords clanging against shields. You've got people screaming. You've got people dying. You've got all this stuff. And what that represents is the spiritual battle that we face today. Mm-hmm. And, and the fact that they did good while Moses had the rod of God held high was good, but then when it went down, when he got tired, they were losing. Even though... Even though he had the rod of God, he was still having to depend upon his own strength. Amen. Yeah. Did anybody get that? I did. Mm-hmm. You're a preacher, yeah. though. You're a preacher. You don't count. <laughs> Even though he, I'm teasing you. Even though he had the rod of God, he still would get tired. That mm-hmm. fell back upon his own strength. And one of the problems today that Christians are defeated. One of the problems that Christians are having struggles. One of the problems that, that we live depleted lives and empty lives and we walk around all like we're in a slump all the time is we're trying to fight too many battles within our own power. That's right. Amen. That's right. Every time I mess something up, it's because I've tried to fix it. Yeah. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Yes. Yep. Over and over, the battles that I face for some reason first, I always think I can fix it. Mm-hmm. Victory never comes that way. Mm-hmm. Too many of us, how many of you, and I hear this all the time, some of us think we've got the mind to fix anything. Everybody says, that, you know, says he knows everything. Well, quit calling me and ask me stuff then. <laughs> I get sick of hearing that. You know, people want to know things and they call not just Bible stuff, not just Jesus stuff, just regular stuff. How to fix this. Or, well, quit calling me. Or quit making fun of me. <laughs> but my original point was is that so many of us think that we have the power within ourselves to fix things. And you cannot deal with spiritual problems and spiritual war fleshly. That's right. right. Paul That's said, right. what did Paul tell us? When he is explaining to us in Ephesians chapter 6 about the spiritual armor of God. Mm-hmm. He, he says this is what you need to face the enemy. And right. the first thing he says, we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. That's right. 90% of church folk don't know what that means. That's right. right. It means this is not a physical fight. Yes. This is not a. It's not kicking. It's not fixing with your mouth. It's not That's fixing right. with your mind. It's not fixing with you doing something. It is a spiritual battle. He said we war against principalities. That's right. Powers of the darkness, spiritual wickedness in high places. You can't fix that. That's right. So many people try to handle problems carnally. Paul also said that our weapons of warfare are not carnal, Mm -hmm. but they're mighty through God Mm -hmm. for the pulling down of strongholds. How many of you realize that from this point on, when you're facing a spiritual battle, you have to fight it spiritually? That's right. right. You'll get tired. Mm -hmm. So many times I try to fix things, and it never, ever works. Mm -hmm. Another way people deal with things fleshly or carnally is emotionally. Yeah. Yeah. If I don't say anything else, you all here, let me me say this. You can't fix anything emotionally. Preach Mm -hmm. that. Yes. You know. Preach. Just just freaked out, acting crazy, crying and screaming and doing this and all that. Acting on emotion. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. It won't fix anything. No, sir. Mm -hmm. But yet I try all the time for some reason. <laughs> you, you wouldn't believe when Paul's explaining, just like this battle that's taking place there <coughs> below Moses, Paul's explaining that that's what's going on in the Spirit. Mm-hmm. Most people don't ever get a true demonic attack. 
You hear what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I've had people say, well, I had a flat tire this morning. Devil, he sure owned it. <laughs> a flat tire is a flat tire. <laughs> we do not war against flesh and blood. Mm -hmm. We do not war against physical things. Well, I ran out of gas the other day. That devil, he was just trying to every way. Your car can't run without gas. <laughs> Let me tell you something, not trying to scare you, but if you have a demonic attack, it will have nothing to do with anything physical. Mm. Mm. And I can tell you this, because I know when he comes against you, you better not try to fight him physically because you're beat before you ever get in. That's right. You've got to understand what Paul says, Jeff. This is not a flesh battle. This is not something you're going to punch the lights out of. Right. This is not something you're going to kick under the rug. He says, we fight against stuff in the air. Yes. We fight against stuff in, 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 in the principalities and in the spirit realm. Even Jesus said God is a spirit. And He must be worshipped in spirit and truth. Right. So it ought to be the same thing because the angelic form that the Satan is in, He is in the spirit realm. Mm -hmm. And His demons and His buddies and all those that fail. So what do you think? You're going to hit Him upside the head and that's going to work? <laughs> no. You fight Him with prayer? Yes. Fasting? Yes. This Word? Yes, sir. And the Jesus that's in you. Can I keep preaching or do I need to hush? You can keep on around. Moses, by his own strength, he got so far. By his own strength, the children of Israel did so good. But when he got tired, they failed. That has to speak to you tonight. You cannot fix anything fleshly. You cannot fix anything by your own power. Mm -hmm. Right. Because you'll mess it up even worse. So, where did the victory come from? I need a volunteer. I need a Moses. You folks at home, I'll explain this to you, I promise you. I, I need, have I got some pastor? You're, you're Junior, Moses. You're the Bible says he was 120 years old and his pastor was 45. <laughs> He had his eyesight, so I'm not kidding you because Moses wasn't an old man. Moses looked good when he died. And, and hey, God did his funeral. That's right. God's the only one knows where his burial place is. Can you be a Moses Jr.? I'll try. Come on up here. Come on, come on up here and stand right here, please. Please. I, I want to show you, this is so important for you to realize because what I've tried to teach you is you cannot win the battle on your with your power. Mm -hmm. in your force, in your flesh, in your carnality. You cannot win. This is what's said in this Scripture. Mm -hmm. So I want to show you really what happened while they were down there fighting. I need an Aaron. You knew I was coming. <laughs> <laughs> Have we got a stool? Have we got a stool, Sister Drake? Sure. It's too small. I need a herd. Not her, H-E-R, H-U-R. Jeff, you, can you stay in? Not very long. All right, Mark. Oh, wait a minute. You got your, can, can you be a her? Come on up. Not female her, but H-U-R. Go <laughs> stand on each side. Now, I want to show you something. And you folks at home, what I've done, I've got three good-looking guys. <laughs> standing up here, and they're going to help me with an illustration, an example, if you will, and I'm going to explain it to you. The first thing they did is they set a, a, a rock under him. There's your rock, Moses. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm telling you, when God showed me this a couple years ago, it blew my mind. Mm -hmm. And I want you all to see it, and I want you folks at home to get it too, and I, I promise you will. It says that they put a rock under him. Now, have you been to Golgotha when you were in Israel? Mm -hmm. What did it look like? Uh, it's just a crag, a crag of a rocky bluff. It's rocky, isn't it? Mm -hmm. If you understand, Calvary is also called in the New Testament Golgotha, mm -hmm. which translates the skull mm -hmm. because it's just a rock. Mm -hmm. And if you've ever